Germany, awesome, Tunisia, Peru, Eduardo, I used to live in Lima. Awesome. All right. Well, it's uh, 6.15, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, I think this is good. Uh, you can see me. Uh, can you just confirm you can see me switching slides here? Yep. Awesome. All right. Well, welcome everyone. And um, <clears throat> sorry for the confusion earlier. Uh, I want to give a shout out to the moderators. Uh, this is, I'm sure, a lot to wrangle. And um, uh, you've been doing a great job and like super responsive. So thank you. And also shout out to uh, Mackenzie, my colleague from uh, EPAM, who's helping, uh, been helping to shepherd us too. Uh, so what we're going to talk about today, what I'm going to talk about in the next 15 minutes is uh, software architecture. Um, this is for those who uh, might be new to um, software architecture, like Drupal devs, uh, lead devs, um, who uh, you know hear about this role a lot, uh, maybe PMs, uh, and want to know more about it. What does it mean? How's it different than um, than a lead dev? Uh, so it's going to be pretty uh, lightweight, but if you, uh, I'd love to discuss any of this more. Um, if you visit us at the EPAM booth, um, and you can drop me a line too, um, ask in chat, and um, I'll share my my contact info. Should have had it on a slide. Um, so, um, why do we care about software architecture? Well, if you've ever been a project and uh, you know thought who who designed this, um, why does it have to work like this? Um, uh, you know. Um, uh, you know, it, it literally can't do that. Uh, then, uh, then you should care about software architecture, and uh, and you should know who to blame. And a lot of cases, that's uh, the architect. All right. Um, so moving on, um, what I'm going to talk about, just do a quick introduction, um, explain the software architect role, uh, talk a little bit about what kind of requirements um, software architects care about. It's a little different than leads. Um, I'm going to talk about documentation and just some general tips on architecture, documentation, um, design patterns, uh, and then hopefully, if we have time, uh, we'll do some questions and discussion. All right. Uh, so about me, um, I've been with uh, EPAM for about six years. Uh, I've been doing Drupal for um, a little over 12 years. Um, makes me feel super old. And uh, this is my uh, eighth DrupalCon. Uh, EPAM, you know, we have a lot of Drupal people. We have a lot of certified people. Um, we do pretty good work, uh, and um, we also have an internal um, architecture um, school and university that uh, um, if you're interested in a, in a job and you want to um, get, uh, get trained up in architecture, um, we're a really good place to do that. Um, so first of all, um, I think a role that many people are more familiar with is lead developer. And so I just want to explain some of the differences. And, and I know people are going to have different ideas on this, but this is my take uh, on software architect compared to lead dev. So software architect is going to oversee um, the design uh, of the system, of the software system. The lead dev is going to um, oversee the implementation. And um, you know they care about code quality, um, whereas the software architect cares more about what are the quality attributes. Um, so as a whole, how does the system function? Um, and uh, uh, and meet its uh, non-functional requirements. We'll get into that later. Um, software architect has uh, more of a business focus than maybe the lead. Um, however, they're both client facing. Uh, and then the architect is um, probably going to get more in the weeds on like infrastructure selection and planning. Um, whereas um, the lead, unfortunately, is, is probably going to be in the weeds in DevOps and, and deployments. Um, and uh, um, what else here? They're both going to be client facing. Um, they're both going to be usually subject matter experts. Software architect is usually a subject matter expert in a particular um, technology like Drupal or PHP or Symfony. Um, and then like an enterprise architect is even higher. We'll talk about that a little bit too. Uh, they're both going to work on estimations. Uh, they both care about design patterns, um, sometimes for different reasons. Uh, and they both kind of play a role in framework uh, selection. Uh, so moving on. So what are um, what are kind of the core tools of a software architect, and and how do we measure architecture success? Um, so uh, the way we measure quality is uh, we start out with quality attributes, and it's very important that these are um, uh, understood and and um, 
and, and, and we have uh, stakeholder uh, buy-in on these. Uh, so these are the illities. So maintainability, securability, extensibility, customizability. Um, these are all things that we care about, and um, they have specific meanings. And you can you can go look up like a huge long list. Uh, but basically, any any time um, a client says something like, um, "This is slow," um, that's not good enough. We we need to know. Okay, so um, uh, so so that's an, uh, a quality attribute. Um, what is uh, what does that mean? Um, so we need to write it down first. Um, so we also care about business and strategy. So uh, when you're designing, uh, when you're architecting some so software for a customer or internally, you need to have some sense of uh, what, are the, what are the tools and platforms that the organization's uh, comfortable with? What can they do resource-wise? Um, you know, are they on Azure? Uh, are they on AWS? Um, you may know a little bit about uh, pros and cons of each system and, uh, and you can uh, make your selections accordingly. So, you know, if you know it has a slow firewall, you can reduce the total number of requests. Um, and then enterprise architecture is uh, more focused on like product roadmaps, um, enterprise systems integrations. Uh, I would even lump big data in there. Um, things like a tech, uh, designing a tech radar, and uh, uh, at least at EPAM, uh, we we use a uh, TOGAF pretty heavily for uh, inter enterprise architecture. Um, so uh, according to um, the, uh, the SEI book on this, uh, the definition of software architecture is a system of, uh, architecture of a system is a set of structures needed to reason about the system, which comprise both software elements, relations among them, and properties of both. Um, which really means uh, it's more than just the early stage design. It's how everything works together, and it's evolving. Um, so I talked about quality attributes. Um, I think the book, same book also has a pretty good definition of quality attribute. It's a measurable or testable property of a system that is used to indicate how well the system satisfies the needs of its stakeholders. Um, so the important thing here is when you're dealing with a client or a stakeholder, um, it's important to know that this is a balance, right? Uh, you can't always have um, affordability uh, with a lot of maintainability or extensibility. Like it's always a trade-off. So it's important to, to only select a few, and those are your top uh, goals. The way we translate these into measurable and testable properties is we use uh, architecturally significant requirements. Um, must be measurable, um, and it's driven by this quality attribute. So you can map an ASR to a quality attribute. Uh, and again, these are agreed on by stakeholders so that when you get into the situation where the client says, hey, this is slow, you can say, um, you, OK, you're right. It doesn't meet our ASR that we agreed on. Um, we'll fix it to get it to that benchmark. Um, and we design you know, knowing that up front. When you don't know how fast it has to be, or you don't know the turnaround time for you know, adding a new uh, feature, um, it's hard to design for that without knowing ahead of time. Uh, and, and those requirements exist whether we formalize them or not. Um, so these just contrast to functional requirements that we're all uh, pretty, pretty used to, which is basically what, what does the software do? Um, so documentation, just a few tips on documentation. Um, uh, best documentation is always the code. Uh, I, documentation doesn't get updated. We know that. Um, it's nice if it does. Um, I like Lucidchart. This is an um, image just from a Lucidchart default template. Um, but the, at the end of the day, good documentation and code is, is the best way to go. And that's aside from uh, architecture. Um, so one of, the, one of the issues I see a lot in diagrams is um, like an ar uh, architectural artifact or a diagram might ha try to explain too much. Um, so just one tip is keep it to one logical um, uh, structure that you're trying to explain. So it might be the network. It could be a flow of shopping cart, uh, but keep it to that. Don't, don't, don't mix. And architecture is fine. I mean, we all use architecture, which is, you know, all the boxes that explain kind of the logical components of a system. But I would say even, even still, just do multiple charts that show um, different things you want to do, like workflows, network traffic. You can use the same diagram, just you know, um, mark it up a little different 